Today, uh, through the grace of God, we are going to speak together about the miracle of the man born blind, the miracle that we just uh, heard in the gospel this morning. And we are approaching the holiest time of the year. The entire year should be holy, but we are approaching the holiest time of the year. And if uh, we quickly revisit some of the previous Gospels that we read during Lent. The Church in its wisdom organizes these Gospels for us with a specific purpose in mind during the period of Lent. But if we revisit some of the previous Gospels, we see the story of the Samaritan woman, the prodigal son, the paralytic man. We see a certain theme we see a theme. People like us, who live complicated lives, who are lost, who live in sin and darkness, and they aren't satisfied. They don't find the necessary change, the necessary transformation, until they meet who? Christ. They don't find the necessary change until they meet Christ. And the man born blind in today's gospel, he, he is no different. He wasn't able to change, to transform until he met Christ. And I don't want to delve too deep into the story. We all know it. It's a very famous gospel. But I want to emphasize just one point from the gospel today. The disciples asked Christ, who sinned, this man or his parents? And the church fathers teach us that, as Christ says in the gospel, it was neither. It was neither his parents nor he himself that sinned. For the man was born blind, right? And God does not visit the sins of of the parents on the child. St. Cyril of Alexandria explained they are from their first age, as it were, bereft of the true knowledge of God. Bereft of the true knowledge of God. What does that mean, bereft? They were deprived of the true knowledge of God. That is the definition of blindness. For our purposes today, that is the definition of of blindness, the lack of the true knowledge of God. This man, blind from his birth, his life, his life was transformed by the simple act of encountering Christ. That was all it took. All it took for him to transform is for him to encounter Christ, for him to meet Christ. That was it. And this story isn't simply uh, about physical healing. Christ could heal anyone from any physical ailments, and he did. But this story is about illumination. It is about illumination of the soul by the light of the world. We know he himself, he said, I am the light of the world. Spiritually, this blindness, it symbolizes our human condition. And the church fathers say that we are, every single one of us is the blind man. This blindness symbolizes our human condition. We are blinded by sin, unable to see the truth without what? Unable to see the truth without what? Divine intervention. Divine intervention. That's exactly what happened today to the man who was born blind. St. Augustine, reflecting on this passage, once said, The blind man in the gospel represents the human race, blinded from its birth by original sin. Each of us is born into this blindness, each of us needs the touch of Christ to see truly. 
Christ said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. This declaration is profound. The reason for the Lord Jesus Christ coming into the world was to enlighten us. As St. Luke mentions in Acts chapter 26, that the Lord came to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. That's why he came. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And in Luke chapter 4, a couple of chapters before this gospel, we read that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. And we hear the priest in the Gregorian liturgy. Unfortunately, we really only pray that liturgy during Christmas and and Easter, but it's, it's beautiful. And during that liturgy, the, the, the priest says, you have bound me with all the remedies that lead to life. As true light, you have shown upon the lost and the ignorant. Who is the lost? Who is the ignorant? Me. You have shown me the power of your authority. You have given sight to the blind. This is all in the Gregorian liturgy. This man, the man who was born blind, he could not enjoy the grace of sight except after he met Christ. Through his actions, Christ not only restores physical sight to this blind man, but he also pierces the darkness of his disbelief and his sin. St. Cyril of Alexandria said, Christ is the true light, which enlightens every man coming into the world. And by this miracle of giving sight to the man born blind, he demonstrated his divine authority. That's exactly what we just said is prayed during the Gregorian liturgy, right? You have shown me the power of your authority. Yet we saw today in the gospel that not all people are willing to step into this light. Not all people are willing to see. In both Gospels this morning, the Gospel in Matins and the Gospel that we just read during the liturgy, we saw the response of the Pharisees, right? The Pharisees, the Pharisees could not reconcile the work of Jesus with their understanding. St. John Chrysostom in his homilies uh, about this specific story, he points out their condition, which he calls tragic. And he says, the Pharisees were indeed more blind than the one healed. They were more blind than the, than the man who was born blind. For the blind man received both physical and spiritual sight, whereas the Pharisees refused to see the evident truth before them. They refused to believe. Their hearts were hardened. And if you read some of the, the church fathers, they say this is the whole purpose why Christ did this miracle. He was trying to soften their hearts. But they refused to see. And we also sometimes refuse to see. And this is an important point from, from the gospel today. How, how exactly did Christ open the eyes of the blind man? We know physically he spat on the ground and he made clay with the saliva, right? And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and what did he say to him? Go wash. Go wash. And why, why the water? What is the significance of of Christ telling him to go wash. First of all, it represents baptism, right? Our second birth. We are born again, given sight to enjoy God's grace. And without baptism, we can't enjoy God's grace. We can't. And second, he tells him to go wash because... The man has to do his part. He has to do his part. Both the man born blind 
and the paralytic man that we read a couple of Gospels ago, God asked them to take action. Take up your bed and walk. That's what he said to the paralytic man, right? Take up your bed and walk. Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. That's what we heard today. Why? Christ couldn't heal them on his own. <laughs> he couldn't change them on his own. He had to tell the, blind, the man born blind to go and wash and only then would he see? No. Of course not. But he wanted them to take action. He wanted them to be a part in their own healing. In their own change. So ask yourself, do I exhibit the symptoms of spiritual blindness? Do I exhibit the symptoms of spiritual blindness? Do I not realize that I am living a life of sin? Am I happy living in darkness? Am I lukewarm? Am I conformed to this world? Am I spiritually blind? Am I lost? And if I am, what do I have to do to be made well? Just like the man born blind and the paralytic man, God asked them to take action. So do you want to be made well? Do you want to see? Go and wash. Cleanse yourself. Or am I happy with the way that I'm living? I'm happy living in filth. I'm happy living in darkness. I'm happy living apart from Christ. The blind man came to see Jesus, not just as his, he his healer, but as his Savior and Lord. And as the light of Christ entered the blind man's eyes, so does his truth transform our souls. If we are open to receive him. And we read in, in verse 32 that since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? This never occurred before. So if Christ can do this great work, what can he do with me if I am willing? How can he tra transform me if I am ready and willing to be transformed? How can he change me if I am willing to be changed? What great miracles can Christ do with me? So as we approach the week of Christ's passion and his resurrection, we should all pray that we may be made well that we receive our sight, that Christ washes away our sins, and we return to the light. Glory be to God forever. Amen.